Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Thursday, December 7th, 2023. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Alleluia, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt and give God the glory. The Old Testament reading for this morning is from Isaiah 41 through 11. You will recognize the opening verses as part of Handel's Messiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Yet a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare a way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. And the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd and he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them to his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 85, 1, through 1 and 2 and 8 through 13. The psalmist writes, Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the inequity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. The letter lesson this morning is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through the first part of first, verse 15. Peter writes, But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you be in leading lives of holiness and goodness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? Because which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you're waiting for these things, strive to be found with, by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The gospel lesson this morning is the beginning of the gospel of Mark, the first eight verses of chapter one. Mark writes, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I'm sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. As we turn to our morning prayer time, we again hear the words of, of Zechariah as he answers God or comments precisely on God's gift to him in his son, John the Baptist. Blessed are you, Lord, of the God of Israel, for you have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. You have come to your people and have set them free. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our lives. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. You have come to your people and have set them free. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. You have come to your people and have set them free. As we turn to prayer, we remember the words of Psalm 90, verse 14. Satisfy your love, satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and peace. Let us pray. Loving God, each new morning, as the rising of the sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the power of death in the rising of Jesus Christ and you bring us all blessings in him. Especially we thank you this day for our life and ministry, for, for those with whom we are in community, whether it be in a formal church setting or an informal faith gathering or even, even just in a circle of close friends. And we ask your presence today with all with whom we will work or share common concerns as we seek to be about the coming of your kingdom. As always, we, we have to remind ourselves that not all people look the same or feel the same or understand the same as we do. And to view the activities of this day looking for indications of your love at work in the world. We especially pray for those who work for reconciliation, whether it be within our own community or nationally or even internationally. We certainly hold up the country of Qatar, Qatar as they seek to continue mediation in the Hamas war. Strengthen them, guide them, give them stability and stamina. Mighty God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal your victory over all that would destroy or harm. 
and you brighten the lives of all who need you. And especially we pray for, for the situation in Gaza this day. Be with the Palestinians as they struggle to understand what's happening to them. And be with the IDF forces as they try to comprehend how to, how to live in peace with one's neighbors who are intent on not allowing them to do so. At a personal level, at a community level, we pray for families who are suffering separation, whether it's by choice or by chance. And we ask you to be present with people who are different than ourselves as we seek to be agents of reconciliation and understanding in the world. And as always, we pray for those who are isolated, who are cut off either by illness or, or sorrow or grief, who stand in the midst of depression in this winter season without as much light. And we continue to pray for victims of violence or warfare, whether it's the Middle East or Ukraine or Africa or Indonesia. Oh, well, if we could just live in a world not beset by violence. Oh God, you call us to a new way of living. And you walk with us as we struggle to understand that way of living in our daily lives. Keep us open to that which you would have us do that is new or different and more peace-seeking and loving. Holy God, your love is higher than the heavens and your grace is wider than the sea. Awaken our hearts to the joy of your presence and open our lips to sing your praise to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we go out this day, let us remember the words of the prayer that Jesus gave to the disciples when they asked him how to pray. He said, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we go out into the world this day, serve the Lord with gladness Bless the Lord, and may the Lord's name be praised. Alleluia. Amen. Have a Christ-filled day.